domain range. Let's talk about a function. Let's do y equals x plus 3. Okay. If you're looking at x plus 3 and we want to identify the domain range, we just need to remember there's two restrictions on our domain range. Any number that makes our denominator 0 is not in our domain. Any number that makes the even root or of the radicand uh, negative is not within our domain. Basically meaning you can't divide by 0 and you can't take the square root of a negative number. If you remember that, you can go very far with domain range or domain. Can't divide by 0, can't take the square root of a negative number. Remember those two things, you'll get most of the credit on your domain if you can remember those. In this case, is it possible for me to divide by a number that's going to be 0 in the denominator? No. no. Is it possible to take the square root of any number that's in the denominator? No. So the domain is this, is all real numbers. Okay, and we just write it in our interval notation. Make sense? Yes? No. Okay. So all I got to do is adjust this. What if, I, what if I just put now x plus 3 in the denominator? Well, now, is there a value of x that makes my denominator 0? Yes, that number is negative, negative three. 3. So my domain is all real numbers except for the number negative, negative 3. So the way that we write it is negative infinity to negative 3 union negative 3 to infinity. Okay. Now let's try, try, the other, blah, 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 try the other one. What if I put everything under a radical? Can I divide it by, can I divide a number by zero in this case? No. However, I understand, oh, and again, if you, let's say there's a problem where the denominator is more complicated than this, to find what numbers make the denominator equal to zero, just set that number equal to zero and solve. That's how we got that negative 3. Just set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. In here, though, we can't divide by 0, so we don't need to worry about this, like this example. However, in this case, you can see that I, there's numbers that are going to make my radical negative, and I can't divide by a negative number or a negative radical. And you could just think of a number in the top of your head, like negative 5. Negative 5 is not in the domain. Would everybody agree? Because that would make my, radic my radicand negative. So how do we determine what numbers then are part of our domain and not a part of our domain? Well, when it's rational, we set the denominator equal to 0. When it's a radical, we set our radicand greater than or equal to 0. Because it can be 0, you can take the square root of 0. Square root of 0 is just 0. So then we solve. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. So going back to algebra 1, we got to say what numbers are greater than or equal to negative 3. 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3. Negative 3 is greater than or equal to negative 3. 1, 2, all positive numbers. But any number less than negative 3 is not in our domain. So we write our domain as all numbers that are equal to negative 3, but greater than, which would go towards infinity. It can be negative 3, because if you plug negative 3, you get 0. Square root of 0 is 0. That's fine. It's in the domain. But if you do a number less than negative 3, say negative 4, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. We can't take the square root of negative 1 under our real number system. Am I good on step on my third equation? Then all I got to do is um, let's just change it one more time. Now I put the radical in the denominator. So now we can, now it's possible for us to divide by 0, which is a no-no, and it's possible for us to take the square root of a negative number, right? Which is again a no-no. However, without having to do any more work here, we know that under the radical, we know the number has to be greater or equal to 0 anyways, right? Or this has to be greater or equal to negative 3, right? Based on the radical, we know that's true, correct? But now the only difference is, um, we can't have it equal to 0, because if that's equal to 0, then the denominator is equal to 0. So what it looks like is x is just greater than negative 3. So in our domain, the way that we write that is negative 3 to infinity. Yes. On sine x, shouldn't the domain be 0 plus e squared plus e squared? Since that's when it starts over again? Well, um, I'll finish this up, but just remember sine. Um, first of all, you're saying 0 to 360 like it only goes counterclockwise. 
but sine also goes clockwise, and it never stops. It goes in the positive and the negative direction. So the domain for, domain for sine and cosine is going to be all real numbers, because it actually goes in the positive and the negative direction. Because if you remember the unit circle,